we turned on the television and watched for a few minutes and then actually saw the second plane hit uh, the World Trade Center. While I was uh, there over the next several minutes watching developments on the television and as we started to get organized to, uh, to figure out what to do, my uh, Secret Service agents came in. They hoisted me up and moved me very rapidly down the hallway, down some stairs, through some doors, and down some more stairs into an underground facility under the, the uh, White House. The uh, Presidential Emergency Operating Center. <clears throat> Uh, there was a young man who would come in and say to the vice president, the, the plane is 50 miles out, the plane is 30 miles out. And when it got down to the plane is 10 miles out, uh, the young man also said to the vice president, do the orders still stand? And uh, the vice president turned and whipped his neck around and said, of course the orders still stand. Have you heard anything to the contrary? The flight you're referring to is the... The one flight that came into the Pentagon. Pentagon. Norman Mineta's testimony would be completely unreported by the 9-11 Commission. It would also be censored from the online archives of Commission hearings. A spokesperson from the National Archive claimed that it was a technical snafu. The 9-11 Commission will later conclude that Vice President Dick Cheney did not reach the bunker until 9.58. Yeah. Norm Mineta uh, was in the bunker with Cheney, and so that, the fact that that wasn't in the 9-11 Commission report was rather odd, don't you think? Had a single alarm gone off inside the Pentagon, 125 people would be alive today. <laughs> 